The experience of being human has many universal qualities that make it easier to learn together than apart. The purpose of Emotional Warrior Radio is to bring the learning processes one goes through in talk therapy out into the world, so everyone has the opportunity to grow from the experience. Come and join us on this journey. Hello and welcome to the Emotional Warrior Radio. My name is Bianca Grace, and I am your host as well as the psychotherapist who created this in-session experience to share with you. But first, I want to introduce myself as a person instead of just a therapist, since this is the point of the podcast, is to learn from and relate to one another through shared experiences. I have a few things about me that you probably never know if I just kept on talking about codependency or all things related to emotional development. So I will be doing that. And then in the end, I will also introduce to you other ways of working with me if you like what you hear. So let's get started. First of all, I came up with the idea of Emotional Warrior Radio because I really feel that so many people have stories that are very inspiring, that can touch a lot of our lives, and absolutely have been through the ringer as far as their emotional life is concerned. And there's so many lessons there. It's rich, it's full. And even though we can talk about it in therapy as trauma or as something that's gone wrong, uh, you know, in our lives and feels so full of injustice and, and wrong, and it's very hurtful, there's still a tremendous amount of strength in enduring those emotional experiences and surviving them and learning from them. And I think that we need to recognize that uh, we are emotional warriors, us that have come from traumatic backgrounds, and most of us have in some way, shape, or form. Um, and some much worse than others, but that this is something that we can learn from. And these are experiences that we don't have to identify with so personally anymore, but can absolutely come to learn from them, share them with others. Other people will identify with these experiences and they will learn. And that's how we actually change generationally as a society, as a as a, as families go, instead of devolving, we can evolve by sharing stories and learning from each other and identifying with each other's experiences and growth experiences and how we move forward. So that's where the words emotional warrior come together in, um, the creation of this podcast, of my membership, of my community, of everything that I'm doing. And the other part of this is that I want to help individuals struggling with issues of codependency, attachment style, developmental trauma, answer relationship questions, parenting questions. But I want to do it outside of this four walls kind of traditional box therapy. I want to bring it out into the public because I don't think any of this other than somebody's name and the name of their family members and all of that needs to be hidden. I actually believe that these are very important experiences in somebody's life that again, we can learn from and learn from a therapist looking at those experiences they don't have to be ours specifically. There's something very universal about it. So the format of Emotional Warrior Radio is going to be that people apply to the show with their history and concerns that they want to discuss with me. And then I will choose a topic that really, so we can stay focused somewhat that we can focus the session on and focus the podcast um, on, and then we can move from there and into a session-like format where, yes, there will be psychodynamic work, interpretation, but there will also be you know, 
a chance for them to ask direct questions and get practical uh, advice or application for the issue. So it's going to have probably more format or more structure than a session would with me, but it's going to sound a lot like it because actually towards the end of my private practice days, I was doing a lot of education and functioning in a lot of different ways with my clients. Um, If I had had them for a while or if they were colleagues, you name it. So this is a little bit more eclectic, but I think it will be incredibly beneficial and do something that I really dream of doing, which is opening up this bottleneck I see in the therapy industry of one-on-one psychotherapy, which of course is important and people want that and need that. But I also think that so many people don't have access to it and there's not even enough therapists to go around. So this is a wonderful way of being able to share that experience, benefit from that type of experience and get the education behind it that we all deserve and we all needed much earlier than this part of our lives. But thank goodness we're getting it now and we can start to grow once we know. And not only can we grow, but I do believe that we can find encouragement and a sense of relatedness when we listen to the lives of someone that we can identify with and watch them go through a process of understanding and growth within the session and then walk away with new insight. Humans can connect together when they're watching and listening to these types of experiences and really have a profound healing experience themselves. So that's something I'm very excited, again, in sharing, not just information, but an experience through this podcast. Okay, so next let's move into... These questions that I found on the internet that I think would be fun for me to answer for you to get to know me a little bit more as a person, not just as a teacher or as a therapist or a talking head on the matter. I actually really love breaking the mold, and this is something that I can't do in the therapy traditional model, but that's what this is all about is being a person relating to one another. And so I want you to be able to relate to me too, not just the people on the show. So my full name is Bianca Grace Perry. And my zodiac sign is Taurus, sun, Aries moon, Aries rising, and I've got a dragon in the Chinese zodiac. So I'm a lot of fire, but really grounded. And I love that. And the next one is, how tall are you? Five, seven. And now it gets more interesting. Okay, promise. What's your favorite band? Tool. I love Tool, Pussifer. I don't know. I mean, there are the other bands too that Maynard uh, created really good, all of them. However, Tool is something that I can listen to from start to finish. It's just profound. So that's something um, I listen to all the time and is is really true to my heart. Um, Name three things that I love. You know, I love loving. So anything that I can love, I, I will. Definitely my children, my partner and his family, but you know, really that those people allow me to, um, and so do people that I've worked with in the past, honestly, teaching others and healing with others and watching them grow and evolve has been something that I genuinely love to do and why I decided to take my passion for helping others to this next level. Um, name three things that upset me, the complete opposite. Uh, government. I really think that they've been irresponsible over the eons with uh, humanity. And so that really upsets me, uh, crimes against humanity. Um, Systemic uh, narcissism. 
I think is something that we're facing in this country and, and all over the world. And abuse of any kind really gets me uh, my blood boiling, um, which is, of course, you know, being a therapist is tough to keep that under wraps when I hear about it, but I definitely hold space for people to to be able to talk about that. But it, I definitely um, feel a lot when they when they speak about what's happened to them. Um, five things that make me happy. Oh my goodness, uh, the Southwest. I've made pilgrimages to I call it that Arizona twice to have both of my children, which was kind of interesting. Um, I didn't stay there, but I love Arizona. I love New Mexico, you know, and, and actually New Mexico is probably my favorite place, but the Southwest in general is just gorgeous. The beach is my happy place. Um, skiing is something that I have learned in the last couple of years and really enjoy it. And um, this is something, again, about me. I, I'm a rock hound, so I actually used to out in the Southwest go on hikes and find crystals and, you know, look at maps to go and find different minerals. And so I love, uh, I went to Arkansas once and, um, rock hunted for, you know, clear quartz crystal. And it was the most wonderful experience. And I still have some, and I gave so many away when I came back, um, really beautiful specimens and music makes me happy. Music also moves me into different spaces that, um, I can't find anywhere else. I'm sure other people can relate. Um, what's my favorite food? Uh, actually bread, butter, and jelly. And I used to remember as a kid, I was like, God, I could just eat this all day. If I could just have an unlimited supply and it had no negative repercussions, I might eat that most of the time. Um, I love jelly. Okay. So my celebrity crush, uh, Mac Matthew McConaughey, you know, and it's funny in the, uh, the series that he did, um, with Woody Harrelson, um, true detective. I really love that character. And, uh, even though he's a, very much a loner in that, 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 that really did it for me. So, um, also who was my favorite director? Another weird one, David Lynch. And if you've never heard of him, go and look him up. It's, 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 you know, it's mind altering work. It's deep stuff. And obviously being somebody who likes to think and likes to be creative with the mind and very expansive, David Lynch definitely blows the top off of that. Um, so I, another thing is about me that I, I just realized that I didn't put down in here was um, I taught yoga and meditation for 12 years uh, in my 20s and 30s. And actually, that's how I got into psychotherapy, which was I was, you know, definitely have always, I've been teaching exercise. I've been very interested in movement and more preventative health care and wellness. And so somebody, you know, and I danced when I was young and I danced through some of college. And so I was very natural at yoga, but yoga actually provided me, um, not only like an outlet for dancing when I was no longer dancing, cause it was that movement based rhythm and stretching, but it also provided me a philosophy and, um, a path to spirituality that I had not yet, um, walked down. And it was a really interesting experience for me. I mean, that's one way of putting it, but, um, I fell in love with yoga so much that I decided to train and teach then open a studio and work with people again in, in more of a, a class setting, teaching, a personal, personal work too. But then that's when the transition happened. When I started working one-on-one -on -one with people, um, after having my yoga studio for a couple of years, people really were starting to talk to me a lot about, um, what was going on with them emotionally or what was going on in their lives and transitions they were going through. And I was just working with so many interesting people, but I recognized I didn't have the skills and the tool set for helping them with what 
they seemed to really need. And yoga was not going to do that. Meditation was not going to do that. It was going to be a great resource and a wonderful thing for them to do to stay mindful and to help them through what they were um, having issues with. But I wanted to help them with the issue. And so I went back to school um, and decided to get my degree in psychology and sociology and went on to study psychoanalytically at Boston Graduate School of Psychoanalysis and get my license. Oh boy. I mean, just went all the way, opened my private practice. Again, you know, I come back full circle, which is, you know, I, I wanted to work with people in groups and where I thought therapy was um, a really important or psychoanalysis and, and psychoanalytic thinking and theory and relational theory All of these things that I learned and I practiced and researched, these are all incredibly important uh, for people to know. I think more so than just to apply in a therapy session. I think we can all understand this. Psych 101 doesn't cut it. Abnormal psych doesn't cut it. We need to learn how our minds work, how how our brains are imprinted, formed, and are habitual and programmed and, you know, and and how our emotions are connected to all of that and memory. And you can do it. It's not rocket science, but it is so important. I believe it's, it's one of the most important things that you can learn because so many aspects of our life could be so much better, especially relationships Our experience of our lives, our experience of our work and ourselves, we are so enhanced by this knowledge that I think that this is why, again, I feel so passionate about bringing it to you and showing you this work on a very deep level. So that was a tangent. I do digress. (laughs) Back to my questions. Can I cook? Actually, I was a vegetarian for seven years, so I learned how to cook more like vegetarian during that time. But, you know, I I love to cook. I can cook if I want to. (laughs) I also like to eat out. Um, What is my favorite movie? You know, it's a childhood movie, The NeverEnding Story. When I watch that movie, I really relate to what is the experience I've had not only as a child, but as as somebody that enters into the field of a mind, of someone else's mind, and 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 I get to walk around in this, their stories, and I get to walk around in this space in this field with them, and just a very profound experience watching that again after becoming a therapist. Um, one thing I regret that I can laugh about now. Uh, lots of info on this one, but I regret trading my Westphalia VW pop top. Now it was painted like a turtle and I traveled around the U S in it. I loved it. I camped in it. I biked from it. I came back to, I mean, this thing I took everywhere, but at the end of its, uh, of its life, it's starting to break down a little bit. I decided to trade it for an Appaloosa quarter horse that was slightly abused and didn't, we did not get along actually in the end. And I ended up having to find her a good home. And then I had no vehicle or horse. So I don't know what I was thinking. Actually, I, I do, but that was a different time in my life. Um, but a lot of great adventures. So I think that about wraps it up for me. Um, as far as where I want to take you next, um, in this shorter episode, just is that, you know, I have a vision for what I want to do, which is work with people in larger groups again, but really work with you still, you know, not just write a book or speak to you from afar, but I, I want to still engage with people, um, on a very personal level. So I have created a membership platform where I will be, it's called the Emotional Warrior Membership Community. And I have all sorts of cool stuff there where I'll be doing live monthly masterclasses on a topic, you know, surrounding codependency and all those things that I listed. 
Um, and then I will also do coaching sessions that are live twice a month on the second and third month that we'll, we'll talk about more about the topic. We will also, I'll get you, if you have some questions specifically in the chat that sound like those are really, would be great for me to put you kind of on the hot seat. I'll invite you into uh, the coaching call and we can work one-on-one -on -one there for um, a time so everybody can learn from the experience. And um, and then I also have once a month a member spotlight where we have Emotional Warrior membership, I'm sorry, merchandise and um, and if you do the worksheets and you show up to all of the classes, then you know, you're going to be celebrated. And that's the point is that I think healing should be fun. I think we can all work together and learn so much. And just in my time of doing this so far, I've already seen people starting to really grow, change their lives and feel good about their growth. And, and really that's why I'm doing it. So, um, I hope that you can meet me there. It's at biancagrace.com. And then, uh, we'll put the link in the description as well. Otherwise, I'll see you on the first Emotional Warrior podcast session that I will be talking with a young woman. I won't be using names that um, about certain issues pertaining to codependency that will be published as far as the topic is concerned in the description of that episode. So I hope that you give it a listen and see if you can learn and grow from the experience as well. Thank you all for joining me today. Goodbye.